Oh. Okay, Sydney with Black Women TV. Hi, ladies. How are you? Good. How are Hello. You? Good. It's an honor to be speaking with you today, as I've been a fan of both for a very long time. Thank you. So I wanted to give you your flowers to start. Thank you. Have, have to give you your flowers, but let's talk about it. Um, the pilot episode. It started with "Bad Boys Can't Hold Me Down," <laughs> and, it, it, and it ended with. Denise Williams free, which is like my theme song when I'm going through something. Um, <laughs> tell me about the music because the opening song and the closing song really made the episode for me. Mm. And, and Maya, as someone who has an iconic um, mother, who's an iconic artist, tell me a little bit about the music in this series. Like, is it something that you ladies both think that contributed to it? Well, will contribute to the success of it? I mean, I hope so. I think it's cool that that uh, Alan and Matt chose to go the route of like, there's a lot of 90s uh, hip hop. And initially when when I heard about that, that wasn't what I first thought about Molly because we talked for so long about like, well, what is Molly into? What does Molly listen to? Where's mm -hmm. Molly? And I was like, where's Molly from? Is she from the Bay Area? So is she like, what, what kind of stuff is she into? Or like, what did she get into in, in college? And then I realized like, oh, Molly's my age. <laughs> so she probably <laughs> listened to like more or less what I listened to. And yeah. I think it's really infused the show with, a, I think it's a really great, place to come from because it's not the brand new new it's like right. like where she's coming from mm -hmm. I think right. that's really fun and also like the the baller element of that yes. music yes. is like yes the energy yep Paper. it matched up perfectly it matched yeah. up perfectly yes it's well, hard I, to it's hard to move past that when you hear that music you're like oh yep. this yeah. is this is a baller show well, <laughs> yeah I, I, I love a good baller Brilliant. soundtrack. Brilliant. Yeah, baller soundtrack. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. Yeah. But what I love even more is kind of the essence and the theme of this series. Um, you know, especially as Black women, I feel like sometimes, you know, going through divorce or a challenging um, life experience can kind of set us back in a way that not all of us bounce back from. Mm -hmm. um, but in this series, you know, my, we get to see your character really learn herself and rediscover herself. Mm -hmm. And also they do that through charity and through giving back. Um, tell me a little bit about both those two things, the charitable, charitable aspect, and also just finding ourselves just as, you know, women in 2022. I think there's, you know, in the case of this character of Molly, you know, she wasn't thinking about being charitable. It really wasn't, she didn't even know she had a foundation, literally. Mm -hmm. And I think when posed with the, um, with this new life, this, uh, this new responsibility, she had to make a choice about what kind of person she wanted to be. And I think it wasn't, it wasn't an overnight thought. I think it really came from being around people who, she learned to respect and uh, and look at life through their lenses and see that there's so much more than what her experience has been. And yeah, taking that traumatic event and putting herself together and figuring out what that new life was going to be. I think that's exciting to be able to talk about and for people to see, you know, someone going through a divorce, a transition, a change that you're able to choose your destiny and figure out how you, how you want to live your life. Because sometimes we've been living a life that we didn't really choose or that, you know, we didn't, we never really thought about changing. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. Um, MJ, if I could ask you, tell me a little bit, I love Pose. I'm a huge fan, huge, huge, huge fan of Pose. Um, but stepping in into this um, this this atmosphere of a dramedy, you know, in inter the intersection of drama and comedy, and having Maya, who's an icon, yes. lead you into this. Tell me a little bit. Yes, Maya, you're an icon. Yeah, I, tell listen, me I a little bit about yes. stepping as 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 an icon yourself. Tell me a little bit about stepping into that field with Maya behind you. Well, I mean, there is obviously a safety net when you have someone like Maya right there to just be like, okay, she's right here. Okay, good. I feel safe. But it is a bit scary. You know, I was, I'm, I'm a drama girl. I love drama, but I'm also silly as 
flub. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm not a curse, you know, yeah. but I, I was silly and foolish. And I, I felt in that space, I can do that. I felt like I can be the most freest and um, also be able to channel a character who is dry, like dryly humorous. Like she is not overtly hilarious, but she has her way about her that you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe she said that or mm-hmm. felt that way. And I also like that, you know, the character Molly brings her back to the surface level. You know, it's not like everything is always hard and you're not going to get out of this place. Like you're in a wonderful foundation and you can grow, you can move forward. And it's the way Molly says, look at me. I think so. Fia is like, I see you. And I want to be that crap. Mm. Ugh, darn it. Well, teach me, but I don't want to tell you to teach. Yeah, me. exactly. Right. Like it's, it's listen, that, that relationship totally came on screen. So congrats to you both on that. And congrats to everything you, you give to our culture and just wanted to give your flowers and end and with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Have a great day.